from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 12 through 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I said a little while ago in the, inter in the announcements, today begins our new sermon series, The Jesus I Have Known. And in this series, we will delve into how we perceive Jesus. So I want you to think for a minute. How do you relate to Jesus? How do you see Jesus? Is it the same as it was 10 years ago? What about last week? I ask because Jesus comes to us in a variety of ways so that we can relate to the divine. So these different ways we see Jesus will be the focus of our sermons for the next few weeks. Today, we're going to look at Jesus as friend. Now, one of the unique things about Jesus Christ is that he is fully human and fully divine. His life enables us to get to know God in a way we couldn't before. Through Jesus, we can relate to God on a personal level because the Gospels tell us what he did how he talked, and who he cared about. So we are able to connect to Jesus personally and get to know him. In the passage that I just read, Jesus changes his relationship with his disciples. He calls them not servants, not followers, but friends. Now this offer of friendship comes from the Lord. It's not something that we can achieve on our own. It's a function of God's love, grace, and mercy that God reaches out to us with the offer of friendship. Now, this option of being friends with Jesus Christ allows for a whole new dimension in our relationship with the divine. As the Gospel of John tells us in its opening chapter, Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh, who was with God and was God, and through whom all things were created. This Jesus Christ wants to be friends with us. Think about that for a minute, because it just blows me away. Now, I think we all know how important friendship is. Um, the Mayo Clinic just tells, tells us just how important it is. They say that good friends are good for our health. Having a good friend can increase our happiness, lower our stress, give us a sense of belonging, improve our self-confidence, help us cope with trauma and tragedy, and tell us the truth. Now, I'm personally blessed with some wonderful friends so I fully understand the benefits of friendship. And I know y'all do too. But the question for today is what does it mean to be friends with Jesus? Now I must confess that I never thought about Jesus as a friend until well into adulthood. It was mainly because of sermons I heard. I was taught about a judgmental, critical Jesus, um, that was, and that wasn't the type of friend I was interested in, then or now. Um, it took me decades to realize that the be Jesus could be the best friend possible, 
one that was always there for me, one who loved me unconditionally, even though he had seen me at my worst, one I could be honest with and still stay in relationship, one who wanted what was best for me and would nudge me in the direction I needed to go, even if I might be heading in a different direction. I came to realize that Jesus Christ was the ultimate friend. This is the type of friendship we all want and need. So what are some things we can do to cultivate friendship with Jesus? Well, I've been thinking about that a lot, and I've come up with three things that I think are the basis of any authentic relationship. And that applies to our friendship with Jesus, too. First, we need to get to know Jesus. And we do that by spending time with him. One article I read said that it takes a minimum of 60 hours to form a true friendship. And that sounds about right to me because we need to really get to know people that we're going to be friends with. So we need to spend quality time with Jesus. We have to invest in this relationship by giving Jesus our attention. Now, there are lots of ways we can do this. We can read the Bible because that tells us about Jesus. We can join a small group like the one that Christine's going to be doing starting Wednesday where we can learn about Jesus some more and actually talk about who he is and what he's like. We can talk to Jesus and listen because conversation is a two-way street when we pray. But none of these things are once a week activities. They need to be ongoing. So we really need to prioritize spending time with Jesus, just like we prioritize spending time with our earthly friends. We wouldn't have good relationships if we only spent an hour or two a week with our friends, especially as we're getting, trying to get to know them. Now, when I spend time with my friends, we talk about what's going on in each other's lives. I tell them things. Um, now, with Jesus Christ, you might think you don't need to tell him what's going on in your life because he's divine. Um, but think what you're missing. Okay. Philip Yancey has a great story that I heard on a video he did years ago about a young woman whose father became bedridden. Now, she went on about her life, went to school and work every day. But in the evenings, she would come and sit on her dad's bed and tell him all about her day. It was her way of sharing life with him, even though he couldn't do what she was doing or be there with her while she was doing things. Yancey pointed out that that's what prayer should be. God wants that kind of relationship with us, where we tell God things that are important to us. That's how relationships develop, when we share. Now, a second part of true friendship for me is trust. For a genuine, deep friendship to take root, we have to get to the point where we trust the other person. Now, developing trust, for me, is like a dance. We divulge little bits of ourselves and see if we can trust the other person to tell more of our story over time. So opening up and being honest is an integral part of a strong friendship. It goes along with spending time, but it's different. Uh, I know people who can spend days together and never talk about anything but surface level stuff. Okay? That's not a real friendship. It's more of an acquaintanceship, but it's definitely not a deep friendship if you're not willing to talk about what you really think and feel. 
So we have to open up, be willing to open up and be honest. Um, when we get to the point where we trust the other person in a friendship, we will share our thoughts and our feelings. This type of sharing can be scary because it opens us up to hurt. It makes us vulnerable. Um, but it also enriches our relationships because we know we have people we can share with. We need people we can be authentic with. Those who have seen us at our worst and still love us. Jesus can be one of those people. Now we can learn to trust Jesus by, again, reading the Bible, reading about the promises that Jesus makes in the Gospels. He promises to never leave us or forsake us. He promises to be with us to the end of the age. Jesus is also an honest friend. In the Gospels, he tells us that we will face suffering, but we won't suffer alone. He will be with us in it, and he understands exactly what we're going through because he's suffered as well. In the Gospels, we also see how Jesus treated people who shared their thoughts and feelings with him. He never discounted their feelings, and he always remained in relationship with them. So we can trust that Jesus will do that with us also. So we can share our anger, our hurts, our hopes, our dreams with the one who is always with us and will never leave us. The third part of friendship for me is presence. We need to be willing to show up for our friends and we want friends who will show up for us when we need them. Now that might be a shoulder to cry on. It could be any number of things. But we have to be willing to put our love into action with friends. And friendship is all about active love. Now again, you might think that Jesus doesn't need anything from us. But listen to what he says to his disciples. You are my friends if you do what I command you, which is to love one another as I have loved you. For Jesus, real friendship is based on love and re reveals itself in compassion and active care. So the way we form a friendship with anyone, including Jesus, is by reaching out in love. My friends, Authentic friendship requires time, trust coupled with honesty, and loving action. It's risky because we open ourselves up and become vulnerable. But if you've ever had a good friend, you know that the risk is worth it. Because authentic friends bring out the best in us. They are there for us. And they are people who are willing to be honest with us, which we all need. Now, this type of friendship with Jesus is even better because Jesus Christ is divine and thus won't ever be too busy for us or end the friendship. Jesus keeps that offer of friendship open to us our entire lives. A friendship with Jesus equips us to live a life of love and compassion where we can grow into the fully formed, complex human beings that we were created to be. In addition, as we are friends with and spend time with Jesus, just like with other friends, earthly friends that we have, we start to take on the characteristics of the people we are closest with which means we start to take on the characteristics of Jesus and we can love others the way that Jesus loves them. Now, I'm not the same person I would be without my friends. They have helped me grow and flourish. Um, and as much as I love my friends, I love Jesus more 
He has been with me at all times, even times when my earthly friends could not be there. He's always willing to listen. And he's there for the good times and the bad times. He can be that for all of us. Jesus isn't limited. And I pray that all of us will develop a deep, authentic friendship with Jesus that continues to grow stronger for all of this life and for eternity. Thanks be to God.